by the Aurelian Wall and Other Elegies by Bliss Carman. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. In memory of John Keats. By the Aurelian Wall, where the long shadows of the centuries fall from Caius Castius's tomb, a weary mortal seeking rest found room for quiet burial, leaving among his friends a book of lyrics such untold amends a traveller might make in a strange country bidden to partake before he farther wends who shyly should bestow the foreign reed-flute they had seen him blow and finger cunningly on one of the dark children standing by then lift his cloak and go the years pass and the child thoughtful beyond his fellows grave and mild treasures the rough made toy until one day he blows it for clear joy and wakes the music wild his fondness makes it seem a thing first fashioned in delirious dream some god had cut and tried and filled with yearning passion and cast aside on some far woodland stream after long years to be found by the stranger and brought over sea a marvel and delight to ease the noon and pierce the dark blue night for children such as he he learns the silver strain wherewith the ghostly houses of grey rain and lonely valleys ring when the untroubled white throats make the spring a world without a stain then on his river reed with strange and unsuspected notes that plead of their own wild accord for utterances no bird's throat could afford lifts it to human need his comrades leave their play when calling and compelling far away by river slope and hill he pipes their wayward footsteps where he will all the long lovely day even his elders come surely the child is elvish murmur some and shake the knowing head give us the good old simple things instead our fathers used to hum others at the open door smile when they hear what they have hearkened for these many summers now believing they should live to learn somehow things never known before but he can only tell how the flute's whisper lures him with a spell yet always just eludes the lost perfection over which he broods and how he loves it well till all the countryside familiar with his piping far and wide has taken for its own that weird enchantment down the evening blown its glory and its pride and so his splendid name who left the book of lyrics and small fame among his fellows then spreads through the world like autumn who knows when till all the hillsides flame grand pre and marguerite hear it uprooted from the unresting sea and the small gaspero whose yellow leaves repeat it seems to know a new felicity even the shadows tall walking at sundown through the plain recall a mound the grasses keep where once a mortal came and found long sleep by the aurelian wall end of poem this recording is in the public domain the white gall by Bliss Carmen, read for LibriVox.org by Nima. The White Gall, for the centenary of the birth of Shelley. One. Up by the idling reef-set bell, the tide comes in. And to the idle heart today, the wind has many things to say. The sea has many a tale to tell his younger kin. For we are his, bone of his bone, breath of his breath. 
the doom tides sway us at their will the sky of being rounds us still and over us at last has blown the wind of death two a hundred years ago today there came a soul a pilgrim of the perilous light treading the spheral paths of night on whom the word and vision lay with dread control now the pale summer lingers near and talks to me of all her wayward journeyings and the old sweet forgotten things she loved and lost and dreamed of here by the blue sea the great cloud navies one by one bend sails and fill from ports below the round sea verge i watch them gather and emerge and steer for havens of the sun beyond the hill the gray seahorses troop and roam the shadows fly along the wind floor at their heels and where the golden daylight wheels a white gull searches the blue dome with keening cry and something shelley like thy fame dares the wide morn in that sea rover's glimmering flight as if the northland and the night should hear thy splendid valiant name put scorn to scorn three thou heart of all the hearts of men tameless and free and vague as that marsh wandering fire leading the world's outworn desire a night march down this ghostly fen from sea to sea through this divided camp of dream thy feet have passed as one who should set hand to rouse his comrades from their heavy drowse for only their own deeds redeem god's sons at last but the dim world will dream and sleep beneath thy hand as poppies in the windy morn or valleys where the standing corn whispers when one goes forth to reap the weary land o captain of the rebel host lead forth and far thy toiling troopers of the night press on the unveiling fight the sombre field is not yet lost with thee for star thy lips have set the hail and haste of clarions free to bugle down the wintry verge of time forever where the surge thunders and crumbles on a waste and open sea four did the cold norns who pattern life with haste and rest take thought to cheer their pilgrims on through trackless twilights vast and wan across the failure and the strife from quest to quest set their last kiss upon thy face and let thee go to tell the haunted whisperings of unimaginable things which plague thy fellows with a trace they cannot know so they might fashion and send forth their house of doom through the pale splendor of the night in vibrant hurled impetuous flight a resonant meteor of the north from gloom to gloom five i think thou must have wandered far with spring for guide and heard the shy born forest flowers talk to the wind among the showers through sudden doorways left ajar when the wind sighed thou must have heard the marching sweep of blown white rain go volleying up the icy kills and watched with summer when the hills muttered of freedom in their sleep and slept again surely thou wert a lonely one gentle and wild and the round sun delayed for thee in the red moorlands by the sea 
when Tyrian autumn lured thee on, a wistful child, to rove the tranquil vacant year from dale to dale. And the great mother took thy face between her hands for one long gaze, and bade thee follow without fear the endless trail. And thy clear spirit, half forlorn, seeking its own, dwelt with the nomad tents of rain, marched with the gold-red ranks of grain, or ranged the frontiers of the morn, and was alone. Six. One brief perturbed and glorious day, how couldst thou learn the quiet of the forest sun, where the dark whispering rivers run the journey that hath no delay and no return? And yet within thee flamed and sang the dauntless heart, knowing all passion and the pain on man's imperious disdain, since God's great part in thee gave pang to earth's frail part. It held the voices of the hills deep in its core. The wandering shadows of the sea called to it, would not let it be. The harvest of those barren rills was in its store. Thine was a love that strives and calls outcast from home, burning to free the soul of man with some new life. How strange! A band should set thy sleep beneath the walls of changeless Rome. 7. More soft, I deem, from spring to spring, thy sleep would be where this far western headland lies, with its imperial azure skies, under the herring beaten swing the eternal sea, where all the livelong brooding day and all night long, the far sea journeying wind should come down to the doorway of thy home, to lure thee ever the old way with the old song. But the dim forest would so house thy heart so dear, even the low surf of the rain, where ghostly centuries complain, might beat against thy door and rouse no heartache here. For here the thrushes, calm, supreme, forever reign, whose glorious kingly golden throats regather their forgotten notes, in keys where lurk no rune of dream, no tinge of pain. And here the ruthless noisy sea, with the tide's will, the strong gray wrestler, should in vain put forth his hand on thee again, lift up his voice and call to thee, and thou be still. For thou hast overcome at last, and fate and fear and strife and rumor now no more vex thee by any wind vex shore down the strewn ways thy feet have passed far far from here eight up by the idling idling bell the tide comes in and to the restless heart today the wind has many things to say. The sea has many a tale to tell his younger kin. The gray sea horses troop and roam. The shadows fly along the wind floor at their heels. And where the golden daylight wheels, a white gull searches the blue dome with keening cry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Country of Har by Bliss Carmen Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk For the Centenary of Blake's Songs of Innocence Once a hundred years ago, 
there was a light in london town for an angel of the snow walked her street sides up and down as a visionary boy he put forth his hand to smite songs of innocence and joy from the crying chords of night like a muttering of thunder heard beneath the polar star for his soul was all a wonder at the calling veils of har he a traveller by day and a pilgrim of the sun took his uncompanioned way where the journey is not done where no mortal might aspire his clear heart was set to climb to the uplands of desire and the river wells of time home he wandered to the valley where the springs of morning are and the sea-bright cohorts rally on the twilight plains of har there he found the book of fell in the lily garth of bliss fashioned how no man can tell as a white wind-flower is like the lulling of a sigh uttered in the trembling grass when a shower is gone by and the sweeping shadows pass through the hyacinthian weather wheel them down without a jar heaving all the dappled heather in the streaming vales of har there was manna in the rain and above the rills a voice son of mine dost thou complain i will make thee to rejoice thou shalt be a child to men with confusion on thy speech and the worlds within thy ken shall not lie within thy reach but the rain-birds shall discover and the daffodils unbar quiet waters for their lover on the shining plains of har april rain and iron frost shall make flowers to thy hand every field thy feet have crossed shall revive from death's command hunting with a leash of wind through the corners of the earth take the hounds of spring to find the forgotten trails of mirth for the lone child heart is dying of a love no time can mar hearing not a voice replying from the gladder vales of har flame thy heart forth yet no haste have not i prepared for thee the king's chambers of the east and the wind halls of the sea be a gospeler of things nowhere written through the wild with that gloaming call of springs when old secrets haunt the child let the bugler of my going wake no clarion of war for the paper reeds are blowing on the river plains of har centuries of soiled renown to the roaring dark have gone there is woe in london town and a crying for the dawn april frost and iron rain ripen the dead fruit of lust and the sons of god remain the dream children of the dust for their heart hath in derision and their jeers have mocked afar the delirium of vision from the holy vales of har once in autumn came a dream the white herald of the north faring west to ford my stream passed my lodge and bade me forth glad i rose and went with him with my shoulder in his hand the auroral world grew dim and the idle harvest land then i saw the warder lifting from its burg the northern bar and eternal snows were drifting on the wind-bleak plains of har listen humbly said my guide i am drear for i am death whispered snow but wind replied i outlive thee by a breath i am time 
and then i heard dearer than all wells of dew one grey golden shafted bird hail the uplands so i knew spring the angel of our sorrow tarrying so seeming far should return with some long morrow in the calling vales of har end of poem this recording is in the public domain to richard lovelace by bliss carmen read for librivox.org by fraser prescott ah lovelace what desires have sway in the white shadow of your heart which no more measures day by day nor sets the years apart how many seasons for your sake have taught men over age by age stone walls do not a prison make nor iron bars a cage since that first april when you fared into the gatehouse well content caring for nothing so you cared for honour and for kent how many since the april rain beat drear and blossomless and hoar through london when you left shoe lane a marching to no war till now with april on the sea and sunshine in the woven year the rain winds loose from reverie a lyric and a cheer end of poem this recording is in the public domain a sea mark by bliss carmen read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. A Threnody for Robert Louis Stevenson Cold, the dull cold, what ails the sun And takes the heart out of the day? What makes the morning look so mean, The common so forlorn and grey? The wintry city's granite heart Beats on in iron mockery, and like the roaming mountain rains i hear the thresh of feet go by it is the lonely human surf surging through alleys chill with grime the muttering churning ceaseless flow adrift out of the north of time fades it all fades i only see the poster with its reds and blues bidding the heart stand still to take its desolating stab of news that intimate and magic name dead in samoa cry your cries o city of the golden dome under the gray atlantic skies but i have wonder biddings now far down the latitudes of sun an island mountain of the sea piercing the green and rosy zone goes up into the wondrous day and there the brown-limbed island men are bearing up for burial within the sun's departing ken the master of the roving kind and there where time will set no mark for his irrevocable rest under the spacious melting dark with all the nomad tented stars about him they have laid him down above the crumbling of the sea beyond the turmoil of renown oh all you hearts about the world in whom the truant gypsy blood under the frost of this pale time sleeps like the daring sap and flood that dream of april and reprieve you whom the haunted vision drives incredulous of home and ease perfection's lovers all your lives you whom the wonder spirit loves to lead by some forgotten clue forever vanishing beyond horizon brinks forever new 
the road unmarked ordained whereby your brothers of the field and air before you faithful blind and glad emerged from chaos pair by pair the road whereby you too must come in the unvexed and fabled years into the country of your dream with all your knowledge in arrears you who can never quite forget your glimpse of beauty as she passed the wellhead where her knee was pressed the dew wherein her foot was cast o oh, you who bid the paint and clay be glorious when you are dead and fit the plangent words in rhyme where the dark secret lurks unsaid you brethren of the light heart guild the mystic fellowcraft of joy who tarry for the news of truth and listen for some vast ahoy blown in from sea who crowd the wharves with eager eyes that wait the ship whose foreign tongue may fill the world with wondrous tales from lip to lip our restless loved adventurer on secret orders come to him has slipped his cable cleared the reef and melted on the white sea rim o oh, granite hills go down in blue and like green clouds in opal calms you anchored islands of the main float up your loom of feathery palms for deep within your dales where lies a valiant earthling stark and dumb this savage undiscerning heart is with the silent chiefs who come to mourn their kin and bear him gifts who kiss his hand and take their place this last night he receives his friends the journey wander on his face he was not born for age ah no for everlasting youth is his part of the lyric of the earth with spring and leaf and blade he is twill never more be april now but there will lurk a thought of him at the street corners gay with flowers from rainy valleys purple dim o oh, chiefs you do not mourn alone in that stern north where mystery broods our mother grief has many sons bred in those iron solitudes it does not help them to have laid their coil of lightning under seas they are as impotent as you to mend the loosened wrists and knees and yet how many a harvest night when the great luminous meteors flare along the trenches of the dusk the men who dwell beneath the bare seeing those vagrants of the sky float through the deep beyond their hark like arabs through the wastes of air a flash a dream from dark to dark must feel the solemn large surmise by a dim vast and perilous way we sweep through undetermined time illumining this quench of clay a moment staunched then forth again ah not alone you climb the steep to set your loving burden down against the mighty knees of sleep with you we hold the sombre faith where creeds are sown like rain at sea and leave the loveliest child of earth to slumber where he longed to be his fathers lit the dangerous coast to steer the daring merchant home his courage lights the darkening port where every sea-worn sail must come and since he was the type of all that strain in us which still must fare the fleeting migrant of a day heart high 
outbound for other wear now therefore where the passing ships hang on the edges of the noon and northern liners trail their smoke across the rising yellow moon bound for his home with shuddering screw that beats its strength out into speed until the pacing watch descries on the sea line a scarlet seed smolder and kindle and set fire to the dark selvage of the night the deep blue tapestry of stars then sheet the dome in pearly light there in perpetual tides of day where men may praise him and deplore the place of his lone grave shall be a sea mark set forevermore high on a peak adrift with mist and round whose bases far beneath the snow-white wheeling tropic birds the emerald dragon breaks his teeth End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Chapter 6 of By the Aurelian Wall and Other Elegies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Olson Fytak, Los Angeles. By the Aurelian Wall and Other Elegies by Bliss Kerman. Chapter 6 The Word of the Water. For the Unveiling of the Stevenson Fountain in San Francisco. God made me simple from the first, and good to quench your body's thirst. Think you he has no ministers to glad that way-worn soul of yours? Here by the thronging golden gate, for thousands, and for you I wait. Seeing adventurous sails unfurled for the four corners of the world. Here passed one day, nor came again, a prince among the tribes of men for man like me is from his birth a vagabond upon this earth be thankful friend as you pass on and pray for louis stevenson that by whatever trail he fare he be refreshed in god's great care end of chapter six Recording by Linda Olson Fytak, Los Angeles. Phillips Brooks by Bliss Carmen, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. This is the white winter day of his burial. Time has set here of his toiling the span, earthward, not else. Cheer him out through the portal, heartbeat of Boston our utmost in man out in the broad open sun be his funeral under the blue for the city to see over the grieving crowd mourn for him bugle churches are narrow to hold such as he here on the steps of the temple he builded rest him a space while the great city square throngs with his people his thousands his mourners tears for his peace and a multitude's prayer how comes it think you the town's traffic pauses thus at high noon. Can we wealth mongers grieve? Here in the sad surprise, greatest America shows for a moment her heart on her sleeve. She who is said to give life blood for silver proves without show she sets higher than gold just the straight manhood, clean, gentle, and fearless, made in God's likeness once more as of old. Once more the crude makeshift law overproven soul pent from sin will seek god in despite once more the gladder way wins revelation soul bent on god forgets evil outright once more the seraph voice sounding to beauty once more the trumpet tongue bidding no fear 
once more the new pure plan's vindication man be god's forecast and heaven is here bear him to burial harvard thy hero not on thy shoulders alone is he borne they of the burden go forth on the morrow heavy and slow through a world left forlorn no grief for him for ourselves the lamenting what giant arm to stay courage up now march we a thousand file up to the city fellow with fellow linked he taught us how never dismayed at the dark nor the distance never deployed for the steep nor the storm hear him say hold fast the night wears to morning the god of promise is god to perform up with thee heart of fear high as the heaven thou hast known one wore this life without strain that if for thee and me street yard or common such a white captain appear not again fight on alone let the faltering spirit within thee recall how he carried a host rearward and van as wind shoulders a dust heap one way till strife be done strive each his most take the last vesture of beauty upon thee thou doubting world and with not an eye dim say when they ask if thou knowest a saviour brooks was his brother and we have known him in the poem this recording is in the public domain john elliot bowen by bliss carmen read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk here at the desk where you once sat who wander now with poets dead and summer's gone a field so far there sits a stranger in your stead here day by day men come who knew your steadfast ways and loved you well and every comer with regret has some new thing of praise to tell the poet old whose lyric heart is fresh as dew and bright as flame longs for his boy and finds you not and goes the wistful way he came here where you toiled without reproach builded and loved and dreamed and planned at every door on every page lurks the tradition of your hand and if to you like reverie there comes a thought of how they fare whose footsteps go the round you went of noisy street and narrow stair know they have learned a new desire which puts on faith and faltering by and triumph fills their dream because one life was leal one hope was high End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Henry George by Bliss Carmen. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. We are only common people, and he was a man like us. But he loved his fellows before himself and he died for me and you to redeem the world anew from cruelty and greed for love the only creed for honor the only law there once was a man of the people a man like you and me who worked for his daily bread and he loved his fellows before himself but he died at the hands of the throng to redeem the world from wrong and we call him the son of god because of the love he had and there was a man of the people who sat in the people's chair and bade the slaves go free for he loved his fellows before himself they took his life but his word they could not take it was heard over the beautiful earth a thunder and whisper of love 
and there is no other way since man of woman was born than the way of the rebels and saints with loving and labor vast to redeem the world at last from cruelty and greed for love is the only creed and honor the only law end of poem this recording is in the public domain Illichet by bliss carmen read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk friends let him rest in midnight now desire has gone on the weary quest with aching brow until the dawn friends let him rest with a boy's desire he set the cup to his lips to drink the ruddy fire was lifted up at day's cool brink with a boy's desire the heart of a boy he tasted life and the bitter sting of sorrow in joy failure in strife was pain to wring the heart of a boy in a childish whim he spilled the wine upon the floor in beads on the brim was a glitter of brine then out at the door in a childish whim out of the storm in the flickering light a broken glass lies on our warm hearthstone to-night while shadows pass out of the storm friends let him rest in midnight now desire has gone on the weary quest with aching brow until the dawn friends let him rest in sorrow and shame for the craven heart in manhood's breast with valor's name let him depart unto his rest in sorrow and shame in after years god who bestows or withholds the valor shall wipe all tears haply who knows from his face's pallor in after years he could not learn to fight with his peers in sturdier fashion let him return through the night with tears stung with the passion he could not learn all bountiful calm where the great stars burn and the spring bloom smothers the night with balm let him return to the silent mother's all bountiful calm friends let him rest in midnight now desire has gone on the weary quest with aching brow until the dawn friends let him rest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Raphael by Bliss Carmen. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Master of adored Madonnas, what is this men say of thee? Thou wert something less than honors, most exact epitome yes they say you loved too many loved too often loved too well just as if there could be any over loving raphael was it sir and how came this tress long and raven mine are gold you should have made art your mistress lived an anchorite and old ah no doubt these dear good people on familiar terms with god could devise a parish steeple built to heaven without a hod you and solomon and caesar were three fellows of a kind not a woman but to please her you would leave your soul behind those dead women with their beauty how they must have loved you well dared to make desire a duty with the heretics 
in hell and your brother that catullus what a plight he must be in if those silver songs that lull us were result of mortal sin if the artist were ungodly prurient of mind and heart i must think they argue oddly who make shrines before his art not the meanest aspiration ever sprung from soul depraved into art but art's elation was the sanctity it craved oh no doubt you had your troubles devil's blue that blanched your hope i dare say your fancy's bubbles breaking had a taste of soap did your lady loves undo you in some medieval way ah my raphael here's to you it is much the same today did their tantalizing laughter make your wisdom overbold were you fire at first and after did their kisses leave you cold did some fine perfidious nancy with the roses in her hair play the marsh fire to your fancy over quagmires of despair my poor boy were there more flowers in your florence and your rome wasting through the gorgeous hours than your two hands could bring home be content you have your glory life was full and sleep is well what the end is of the story there's no paragraph to tell end of poem this recording is in the public domain to p v by bliss carmen read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk so they would raise your monument old vagabond of lovely earth another answer without words to humdrums what are poets worth not much we gave you when alive whom now we lavishly deplore a little bread a little wine a little caporal no more here in our lodging of a day you roistered till we were appalled departing in your room we found a string of golden verses scrawled the princely manor-house of art a vagrant artist entertains and when he gets him to the road behold a princely gift remains abashed we set your name above the purseful patrons of our board remind newcomers with a nudge verlaine took once what we afford the gardens of the luxembourg spreading beneath the brilliant sun shall be your haunt of leisure now when all your wonder years are done there you shall stand the very mean you wore in paris streets of old and ponder what a thing is life or watch the chestnut blooms unfold there you will find i dare surmise another tolerance than ours the loving kindness of the grass the tender patience of the flowers and every year when may returns to bring the golden age again and hope comes back with poetry in your loved land across the seine some youth will come with foreign speech bearing his dream from over sea a lover of your flawless craft apprenticed to your poverty he will be mute before you there and mark those lineaments which tell what stormy unrelenting fate had one who served his art so well and there be yours the livelong day beyond the mordant reach of pain the little gospel of the leaves the nunc dimittis of the rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain
A Norse Child's Requiem by Bliss Carmen, read for LibriVox.org by Corey Morrill. Sleep soundly, little Thorlac, where all thy peers have lain, a hero of no battle, a saint without a stain. Thy courage be upon thee, unblemished by regret, for that adventure whither thy tiny march was set. The sunshine be above thee, with birds and winds and trees, thy wayfellows inherit no better things than these. And silence be about thee, turn back from this our war, to front alone the valley of night without a star. The soul of love and valor, indifferent to fame, be with thee, heart of Vikings, beyond the breath of blame. Thy moiety of manhood, unspent and fair, go down, and unabashed encounter thy brothers of renown. So modest in thy freehold, and tenure of the earth, Thy needs, for all our meddling, are few and little worth. Content thee not with pity, be solaced not with tears, But when the white throats waken through the revolving years. Hereafter be that peerless and dirging cadence, child, Thy threnody unsullied, melodious and wild. Then winter be thy housing, thy lullaby the rain, Thou hero of no battle, thou saint without a stain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Heart of the Hills by Bliss Carmen. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. In the Heart of the Hills. In the warm blue heart of the hills, my beautiful, beautiful one sleeps where he laid him down before the journey was done all the long summer day the ghost of noon draw nigh and the tremulous aspens hear the footing of winds go by down to the gates of the sea out of the gates of the west journeys the whispering river before the place of his rest the road he loved to follow when June came by his door. Out through the dim blue haze leads, but allures no more. The trailing shadows of clouds steal from the slopes and are gone. The myriad life in the grass stirs, but he slumbers on. The inland wandering tern screal as they forage and fly. His loons on the lonely reach utter their querulous cry. Over the floating lilies, a dragonfly tacks and steers. Far in the depth of the blue, a marten settles and veers. To every roadside thistle, a gold-brown butterfly clings. But he no more companions, all the dear vagrant things. The strong red journeying sun, the pale and wandering rain, will roam on the hills forever and find him never again. Then twilight falls with the touch of a hand that soothes and stills, and a swamp robin sings into light the lone white star of the hills. Alone in the dusk he sings, and a burden of sorrow and wrong is lifted up from the earth and carried away in his song. Alone in the dusk he sings, and the joy of another day is folded in peace and born on the drift of years away. But there in the heart of the hills, my beautiful, weary one sleeps where he laid him down. And the large, sweet night has begun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An afterword, by Bliss Carmen, read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. To G. B. R. Brother, the world above you is very fair today. And all things seem to love you, the old accustomed way. 
here in the heavenly weather in june's white arms you sleep where once on the hills together your haunts you used to keep the idling sun that lazes along the open field and gossips to the daisies of secrets unrevealed the wind that stirs the grasses a moment and then stills their trouble as he passes up to the darkling hills and to the breezy clover has many things to say of that unwearied rover who once went by this way the miles of elm-treed meadows the clouds that voyage on Streeling their noiseless shadows from countries of the sun. The tranquil river reaches in the pale stars of dawn, the thrushes in their beaches for reverie withdrawn. With all your forest fellows, in whom the blind heart calls, for whom the green leaf yellows, on whom the red leaf falls. The dumb and tiny creatures of flower and blade and sod that dimly wear the features and attributes of God. The airy migrant comers on gauzy wings of fire. Those wanderers and roamers of indefinite desire. The rain birds and all dwellers in solitude and peace. Those lingerers and foretellers of infinite release. Yea, all the dear things living that rove or bask or swim, remembering and misgiving, have felt the day grow dim. Even the glad things growing, blossom and fruit and stem, are poorer for your going, because you were of them. Yet since you love to cherish their pleading beauty here, your heart shall not quite perish in all the golden year. But God's great dream above them must be a tinge less pale, because you live to love them and make their joy prevail. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Seven Wind Songs by Bliss Carmen. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Now these are the seven wind songs for Andrew Stratton's death, blown through the reeds of the river, a sigh of the world's last breath, where the flickering red auroras out on the dark sweet hills follow all night through the forest the cry of the whippoorwills. For the meanings of life are many, but the purpose of love is one, journeying tarrying lonely as the sea wind or the sun one wind of the northern land wind of the sea no more his dearest hand comes back to me wind of the northern gloom wind of the sea wandering waves of doom feckless are we wind of the northern land wind of the sea I cannot understand how these things be. 2. Wind of the low red morn at the world's end over the standing corn whisper and bend. Then through the low red morn at the world's end far out from sorrows born down glory's trend. Tell the last years forlorn at the world's end of my one peerless born comrade and friend. 3. Wind of the April stars, wind of the dawn, whether God nears or fars, he lived and shone. Wind of the April night, wind of the dawn, no more my heart's delight bugles me on. Wind of the April rain, wind of the dawn, Lull the old world from pain, till pain be gone. 4. Wind of the summer noon, wind of the hills, Gently the hand of June stays thee and stills, Far off untouched by tears, raptures or ills, Sleeps he a thousand years out on the hills. Wind of the summer noon, wind of the hills, is the land fair and boon whither he wills? 
five wind of the gulfs of night wind of the sea where the pale streamers light my world for me breath of the wintry norns frost touch or sleep he whom my spirit mourns deep beyond deep to the last void and dim where ages dream is there no room for him in all this dream six wind of the outer waste threen of the outer world leash of the stars unlaced morning unfurled somewhere at god's great need i know not how with the old strength and speed he is come now therefore my soul is glad with the old pride though this small life is sad here in my side seven wind of the driven snow wind of the sea on a long trail and slow farers are we wind of the northern gloom wind of the sea shall i one day resume his love for me wind of the driven snow wind of the sea then shall thy vagrant know how these things be these are the seven wind songs for andrew stratton's rest from the hills of the scarlet hunter and the trail of the endless quest the wells of the sunrise hearken they wait for a year and a day only the calm sure thrushes fluting the world away for the husk of life is sorrow but the kernels of joy remain teeming and blind and eternal as the hill wind or the rain and a poem this recording is in the public domain Andrew Stratton by Bliss Carmen Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons Andrew Stratton was my friend, With his Saxon eyes and hair, And his loyal Viking spirit, Like an islesman of the north, With his earldom on the sea. At his birth the mighty mother Made of him a fondling one, hushed from pain within her arms, with her seal upon his lips. And from that day he was numbered with the sons of consolation. Peace and cheer were in his hands, and her secret in his will. Now the night has Andrew Stratton, housed from wind and storm forever, in a chamber of the gloom, where no window fronts the morning lulled to rest at last from roving to the music of the rain. And his sleep is in the far-off alien villages of the dusk, where there is no voice of welcome to the country of the strangers, save the murmur of the pines. And the fitful winds all day through the grass with restless footfalls haunt about his narrow door, muttering their vast unknown border balladry of time to the hoarse rote of the sea there he reassumes repose he who never learned unrest here amid our fury of toil undisturbed though all about him to the cohorts of the night sound the bugles of the spring and his slumber is not broken when along the granite hills flare the torches of the dawn. More to me than kith or kin was the silence of his speech and the quiet of his eyes, gathered from the lonely sweep of the hyacinthian hills, better to the failing spirit than a river land in June, and to look for him at evening was more joy than many friends as the woodland brooks at noon were his brown and gentle hands, and his face as the hill country touched with the red autumn sun, frank and patient and untroubled, save by the old trace of doom in the story of the world, so the years went brightening by. 
Now a lyric wind and weather breaks the leaguer of the frost, and the shining rough month march crumbles into sun and rain, but the glad and murmurous year wheels above his rest and wakens, not a dream for Andrew Stratton. Now the uplands hold an echo from the meadow lands at morn, and the marshes hear the rivers rouse their giant heart once more. Here the crunching flow starts seaward from a thousand valley floors, while far on amid the hills, under stars in the clear night, the replying, the replying, of the ice-cold rivulets plashing down the solemn gorges in their arrowy blue speed, fills and frets the crisp blue twilight with the innumerable sound, with the whisper of the spring. But the melting fields are empty, something ails the bursting year. Ah, now helpless, O oh my rivers, are your lifted voices now. Where is all the sweet compassion once your murmur held for me? Cradled in your dells, I listened to your crooning, learned your language, born your brother and your kin. When I had the morn for revel, you made music at my door. Now the days go darkling on, and I cannot guess your words. Shall young joy have troops of neighbors while this grief must house alone? O oh, my brothers of the hills, who abide through stress and change on the borders of our sorrow, with no part in human tears, lift me up your voice again and put by this grievous thing. Ah, my rivers, Andrew Stratton leaves me here a vacant world. I must hear the roar of cities and the jargon of the schools with no word of that one spirit who was steadfast as the sun and kept silence with the stars. I must sit and hear the babble of the worldling and the fool, pratting know-alls and reformers busy to improve on man with their chatter about God. Nowhere, nowhere the blue eyes with their swift and grave regard, falling on me with God's look. I have seen and known and loved one who was too sure for sorrow, too serenely wise for haste, too compassionate for scorn, fearless man and faultless comrade, one great heart whose beat was love. In a thousand, thousand hollows of the hills today, there twinkle icy blue handbreadths of April, where the sinking snows decay in the everlasting sun, and a thousand tiny creatures stretch their heart to fill the world. Now along the wondrous trail, Andrew Stratton loved to follow day by day and year on year, the awaited sure return of all sleeping forest things is reheralded abroad. To the places of their journey, wells the frost no longer hushes, ways no drift can bury now. Wood and stream and road and hillside hail their coming as of old. But my beautiful lost comrade of the golden heart, whose life rang through April like a voice through some Norland saga crying skull to death, comes not again. Time shall not revive that presence more desired than all the flowers, longer wished for than the birds. April comes, but April's lover is departed and not here. Sojourning beyond the frost, he delays, and now no more. Though the golden wings are come with their resonant tattoo, and along the barrier pines, morning reddens on the hills, where the thrushes wake before it, no more to the summoning flutes of the forest Andrew Stratton, gets him forth afoot, light-hearted, on the unfrequented ways with companionable spring. Only the old dreams return, so I shape me here this fancy, 
foolish me, of Andrew Stratton, how the lands of that new kindred have detained him with allegiance, and some far day I shall find him. There is here my only captain, master of the utmost isles in the ampler straits of sea. Out of the blue melting distance of the dreamy southward range, journey back the vagrant winds, sure and indolent as time, and the trembling wakened wood flowers lift their gentle tiny faces to the sunlight, and the rain birds from the lonely cedar barrens utter their far pleading cry. Up across the swales and burnt lands, where the soft gray tinges purple, moldering into scarlet mist, comes the sound as of a marching, the low murmur of the April in the many rivered hills. Then there stirs the old vague rapture, like a wanderer come back, still desiring, scathed but deathless, from beyond the born of tears, wayworn to his vacant cabin, to this foolish, fearless heart. Soon the large, mild stars of springtime will resume the ancient twilight and restore the heart of earth to unvexed eternal poise. For the great will, calm and lonely, can no mortal grief derange, no lost memories perturb, and the sluices of the morning will be opened and the daybreak, well with bird calls and with brook notes, till there be no more despair in the gold dream of the world. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Grave Tree by Bliss Carmen. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Let me have a scarlet maple for the grave tree at my head, with the quiet sun behind it in the years when I am dead. Let me have it for a signal where the long winds stream and stream clear across the dim blue distance like a horn blown in a dream. Scarlet when the April vanguard bugles up the laggard spring Scarlet when the bannered autumn marches by unwavering. It will comfort me with honey when the shining rifts and showers sweep across the purple valley and bring back the forest flowers. It will be my leafy cabin large enough when June returns and I hear the golden thrushes flute and hesitate by turns. And in fall, some yellow morning, when the stealthy frost has come, leaf by leaf it will befriend me, as with comrades going home. Let me have the silent valley and the hill that fronts the east, so that I can watch the morning redden and the stars released. Leave me in the great lone country, for I shall not be afraid, with the shy moose and the beaver, there within my scarlet shade. I would sleep, but not too soundly, where the sunning partridge drums, till the crickets hush before him when the scarlet hunter comes. That will be in warm September, in the stillness of the year, when the river blue is deepest and the other world is near. When the apples burn their reddest, and the corn is in the sheaves, I shall stir and waken lightly at a footfall in the leaves. It will be the scarlet hunter come to tell me time is done. On the idle hills forever there will stand the idle sun. There the wind will stay to whisper many wonders to the reeds, but I shall not fear to follow where my scarlet hunter leads. I shall know him in the darkling murmur of the river bars while his feet are on the mountains treading out the smoldering stars. I shall know him in the sunshine sleeping in my scarlet tree 
long before he halts beside it, stooping down to summon me. Then fear not, my friends, to leave me in the boding autumn vast. There are many things to think of when the roving days are past. Leave me by the scarlet maple when the journeying shadows fail, waiting till the scarlet hunter pass upon the endless trail. End of chapter 18 Recording by Elizabeth Parsons End of By the Aurelian Wall and Other Elegies by Bliss Carmen